What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Lethal Injections Podcast. I'm Evil Ace King. And this is Evil Crash. We're a man short and probably going to keep it that way. Well, we're probably going to rotate guests in. I'm not going to get too much into that because you know, I'm not a nice guy. Like I said before, I was the ass of the bunch. So, <laughs> it uh, we pretty much do the research anyway, so we're pretty much stacked and ready to go anyways. We do this on a weekly basis now. Is what what is this our third? Yes, this is the third one. Yeah, we we actually done three podcasts. Wow, mom. And you always told me I couldn't do it. <laughs> Alright. Enough with the the BS. Alright, let's get right into it. The PS four once again comes into this dog fight with the Xbox. Now people are claiming it's 50% faster. Oh, yeah. Pretty much on its uh, arithmetic logic unit, which is ALU. And they're saying that the RAM is between 40 to 50% faster. Now, of course, Microsoft's already come out and then they're saying that that's not true. Which, let's be honest, though. Isn't that what they're supposed to do? They should come out and say that, you know, no, nah, it's not 40 or 50% faster. Those are completely bogus, bogus stats. Now, just so people out there understand, this is coming. Our information came from Machinima, IGN, and multiple sites that are saying this information. We're not making it up or pulling it out of our rear. So, basically, from what they're saying is that... It's running fast, but you will not see it in the uh, in the launch titles. They were saying that it, you wouldn't see these in the launch titles. The difference will not be seen in launch titles because they still haven't had time to really. With the new games coming out, they haven't had enough time with the new the, the brand new generation of consoles. So, yeah. so they're saying that you're not going to see any differences between the two machines right at launch the other i guess the i don't know i guess it's how you take this the kind of bad side of that and what now this was a point that machinima brought up that i i kind of i caught on to and thought that you know, we could bring this up, and mean you could talk about this in our podcast. Now they're saying that it it could cause a, a crippling of the PS4 intentionally because it can't games that are on both consoles naturally. Microsoft does not want them to look ten times better on PlayStation Four, and in reality, is is that makes good business sense. Yeah. So what mis what what the point was brought up is it's. It could wind up possibly crippling, not using the PS4's full potential in order to keep them on subpar with each other for titles like, let's say, Battlefield that are on both, Ghosts that are on both. They have to make them look the same. Yeah. Which, I guess I'll get into it with you because... For me, I can understand that as far as business sense, but... Let's say, all right, you're you're a consumer. You're getting a PS4. You're buying a product. Why should it be held back? Because it's faster than the competition, possibly. I mean, how how do you feel about that after hearing that? I mean, for me, it kind of blew my mind. Oh yeah, it blew my mind. I couldn't believe that they're gonna hold back. You shouldn't be holding back. Let that shit roll. I, <laughs> I'm kind of with you too. I mean. I get it, and then I don't get it. I don't, you know, I, why is the PlayStation, why has it got to suffer because they came out with something that might be possibly structurally faster under the hood than the Xbox? I mean, Does I, that just be faster? that's what I'm saying. I mean, if it looks better, it looks better. I mean, hasn't, haven't PC games always been, you know, current gens? If you play something on PC, naturally it looks better. Let's be honest, yeah. Skyrim looks better on PC than it does on, you know, your PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360. With, why why wasn't the... Now, if this is true, now, this is just machinima and speculation, and, you know, nobody has said that's what will happen. Yeah. 
But if it does, that makes no sense because they haven't said, okay, well, we're releasing these on consoles too, so we have to dumb this down to console standards for PC players. You haven't done it to PC guys, and you shouldn't have. It's They should be able to play it and not be held back because the current technologies we have now just couldn't keep up. That's not a PC player's fault. That has, you know, what I'm saying is it's a stronger powerhouse on a PC they got some of the full potential and a lot of games like Skyrim and whatnot look better on PC than co current console mm -hmm. I mean if the Xbox One if there really is going to be that big of a difference there's no point in my opinion in dumbing it down let people make the decision alright I've been a Playstation fan guy I've been hollering Playstation but let's be honest too what if it looks good, it sounds good, but maybe these games don't perform that great on PlayStation? What if it comes down to completely handling and Xbox is able to actually, you know, flow better? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, what's your I, take? I'm, I'm just still completely mind blown, really, that they would do that. <laughs> that just blows my mind that is if you built it to run the way it should then run the damn thing because P I'm telling you PC players are not going to dumb their stuff down to match what a console is so well it's the, it's the developers it's not the actual people I mean the developers are having to dumb it down is okay. what they're saying so you know, Activision, Infinium Word would have to dumb down Call of Duty. Is that right or wrong? Me, I don't, I don't they shouldn't. I, I agree, but it shouldn't. Like I said, and people are gonna get upset. All right, it here's where I stand. If the PlayStation looks that much more better, because you're gonna find out between this is where people are gonna see the difference. PlayStation exclusive titles that are only on PlayStation 4, they're not going to hold back on the power. They're going to go after every bit of that power they can get out of that machine. Now you have Xbox 360 games that are exclusive like Rise that we've talked about and Titanfall. Naturally, mm -hmm. they're going to want to go after everything that that machine can put out. Yeah. So eventually in the long run, you're going to see differences you're gonna see if the PlayStation has that big graphical advantage between PlayStation 4 exclusives or you know if really there is not that big a difference what really matters I think at the end of it is we're not gonna know how these games are gonna play or how these machines are gonna actually work until we've had hands-on with them the Microsoft everybody keeps talking about power right power 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 is not always a bad thing, but power doesn't always mean everything. It doesn't mean that the game is going to flow and function on The Xbox might have their handling down to a science that you can get on there and play that game and enjoy it. And PlayStation may not have that. That's, that's the thing. Power right now is what, what the big debates everybody keep bringing up. All right, it yeah. sounds like PlayStation has pretty much, in my opinion, like I've been saying, they've been beating the, the, the mess out of Microsoft. They've just been beating them repeatedly. I feel like, I don't know, what do you, I feel like Microsoft's the kid, the, the big kid that had a Twinkie on the playground and then Sony come over there and just beat him up and took it. <laughs> and keeps beating him, even though he's already ate the dang, the Twinkie. Oh, yeah. But... I feel like when the consoles come out, that's when all all bets are on the table then. Everything's in the light. I I still think no matter if Microsoft does not have super power coming out of it, I still think they're gonna have a lot of things right that Sony's just not gonna have. So I understand that people are turning this power fifty percent faster, forty to fifty percent faster thing into a really really big deal but to me it's just not that big a deal yes it might look better but even in the end like they're saying machinima's point was 
they may have to dumb stuff down to make it look the same so it becomes a mute point they're still going to look better so for people who have never played on pc and don't understand the pc side of stuff it's going to look the exact same or, or not look the exact same i correct myself it'll look better period you know i remember playing on playstation 1 I mean, good lord! I can't even believe I was playing on stuff like that. Now, now, now keep in mind, with for the PCers, when you're saying it's going to look better, that's if they have the equipment to make it look better. Well, yes. Well, I, when I say a PC gamer, I'm saying a PC gamer. I'm not saying a guy like me that has an average PC. I'm talking about guys that they put money in their PC and they know what they're doing. Now, those mm. guys, yeah, they they got the power to do it. And there's a lot of companies that have always kind of been, like Battlefield 3 was built more for PC. I mean, that's what it was for. Skyrim was better on PC. There are, there are still game developers out there that show PC love. And it was at one point, you know, a while back, it felt like PC gaming was becoming kind of extinct. Consoles were kind of just taking the limelight. And it, it doesn't feel like that anymore. There's a lot of developers out there focusing on PC again. And that's a yeah. good thing. I'm not very good on PC. Uh, I'm lucky enough to work two thumbs on a thumbstick. I can't do the keyboard and mouse. Uh, this coordinated. I get tangled up in a cable somehow. I had to get somebody to come untangle me. So I can't do PC. Like I've always said, I respect the PC game because I can't do it, man. I cannot do it at all. And that's uh, Crash taking a swig of that monster so he doesn't fall out on us. <laughs> not here. All right, so that's pretty much, that's the take on the whole spill from the PlayStation faster. My opinion, you get a little bit of Crash's opinion in that. Uh, I guess we'll go into our next topic, Crash, and I, I think you got all the information on this one. This whole YouTube thing. Yeah, YouTube and the PlayStation 4. I, I, don't, I don't get what they're doing there. Hopefully it changes in the long run, but as of right now, YouTube is not supported on the PlayStation 4. Uh, dealing with uploading games, which in my opinion is stupid that they did that, but um, it's definitely not going to be on launch day as of right now that they're saying. Um, which looks pretty pretty bad for big YouTubers like examples of LEA and White Boy Seventh Street. You know, they like to put their games up. And I'm the type of person, me personally, I like to get on there and I like to watch those clips of stuff that they put up to help me learn and see what works for them and hopefully I can learn from them and try to do you know make my own combos they can give me ideas with things and stuff like that so for PlayStation not to do that to me that's kinda stupid but hopefully that will change here in the future I, I, I mean, I'm kinda with you on the whole I like I like YouTubers too like I like white boy I like Ali A but not having YouTube support or being able to upload gameplay also hurts esports like the nade shots the big timers the yeah. you know parasites the guys that have really and the, the thing that's crazy about it is twitch TV's really kind of blown up and so has YouTube yeah. for pro gamers it's really gotten I mean, like, even some of them League of Legends guys, I, I, like I said, don't do PC stuff, but I know about League of Legends. I watch some of it. A lot yeah. of those guys have a lot of followers. So to not be able to upload, now, of course, that was PC, but let's say for, like, your nade shot, him being one of the biggest, I guess, Call of Duty players out there, most everybody has heard of him if they've played Call of Duty or follow eSports. Mm -hmm. It hurts somebody like that because then they can't upload. Now... Granted, they're going to probably be on Xbox, which I know Xbox has already come out and said that they will support YouTube uploads. And that's yeah. what makes this kind of a big deal because Microsoft has come out. And this is the first time that they have really been clear with no BS involved. They said, yeah, we're going to support YouTube uploads. And it has something to do, like, I know there's like some digital protection and all this mess. I, I don't know the complete reason why Sony hasn't come out and said anything well they have said something there was a tweet from one of the lead 
guy is Japan. I can't. I cannot pronounce his name. But the tweet will actually be probably up there by Crash's head since he's on the screen. Um, <laughs> he did tweet out and he said that uh, we. He was just saying that he we would like to keep our gamers happy and we are in every way possible trying to basically resolve the issue with uh, PS4 gameplay capture. But there wasn't a definite you know, we're, we're going to we're going to give you, you you know, that ability. And the thing is, there was, it was a while back that a, one of the guys at Sony was on like Jimmy Fallon's late night show. This is yeah. like right after like E3 or something or right after a lot of the news that broke on Xbox and all that stuff. And he said with the share button, you would be able to share to YouTube. And then all this information comes out where they're saying, you know, a lot of people are saying you can't upload to YouTube with a share button. You can't capture your gameplay. You can't do what you've been doing on current gen because the uh, PlayStation 4 will not have component cables anymore. It's just going to have the HDMI. So why is there a share button? Well, you can share. You can share, but you can't share to YouTube as now. You can share to, the, like, PlayStation has their own place that you can share to, but you can't capture, like, I have the HogPog, uh, I think that's how you say it, or HodgePodge HD PVR 2 that I record gameplays off of on the PlayStation or Xbox now. And what they're saying is you can't record like that, and, and you can't send it up to YouTube. But they're working now. What he says is they're working on trying to keep people happy. I think that they do understand that YouTube has become an essential part. And let's be honest, YouTube by itself for games, like I'll put it this way. I I played Minecraft, but I would have never known about Minecraft had it not been for YouTube. Alright? Yeah. I cannot tell you. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But I can't tell you how many games I've actually bought. And people say, Why would you watch someone else play a game? I get people saying that but here's the same thing too some people just the personalities are really good over the gameplay and they're, they're, they're you know the way they talk about it you watch a, a, a nade shot or some of them esports guys they're they're trying to teach you how to become better at playing call of duty you know what they run what type of perks how how they play so you can kind of get in their head uh one of the biggest youtubers i watched I guess I'm going to give him a shout out. When it came to Minecraft, was a group called Yogscast. If you run across this and you've never seen them and you have any interest in Minecraft, check them out because they actually turn it into like stories and they, they get a whole cast of, of people involved and they actually do a really good job. So that's how I kind of came across Minecraft. I gave it a try. I wound up liking it. It's not bad. It's not something that, you know, I'd play 24 7, but it's. It's a different game. So, yeah. but there it's have... It's always good to switch it up. Yeah, but the... I mean, have you ever ran across, let's say, like, somebody playing uh, Mass Effect or a game you never heard of and you watched, you know, their first video play and you're like, man, that looked like a really good game. It, and it, sometimes it's not even about the person talking in the background or commentary or, or any of that. Sometimes you just actually tune in and because they actually have a segment of gameplay, you're watching the gameplay, and the gameplay is interesting to you, and you want to go buy it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, have you ever, you've done that before. Somebody's played a game, oh, yeah. you liked it, you went out and got it. Yeah, it, that or I just uh, got the demo and tried it out. Tried myself. it out after that. and then just... But I saw them playing it to make me want to get the demo. Exactly. So, in all honesty, for Sony and them not to do it, that's free advertisement. Mm-hmm. I don't understand it. I, I don't myself either. So, hopefully they fix that, and hopefully there will be, you know, YouTube game sharing on PS4. We know it's on Xbox, so I commend Xbox for coming out, saying, "Hey, we're gonna have it," and and I, I mean, I can't say enough about it. you know Microsoft there. Uh, you know, I usually am the guy that bashes them, but tonight they've got a lot of things going for them, kind of right now. And that being one of the big issues, in my opinion, the whole YouTube thing. And honestly, for some people, I can see that YouTube not being able to upload. I can see that breaking a couple of people away from Sony and saying, well, yeah. you know, over here, I can do it on the Xbox. Yeah. I mean, they've already told me I can. 
so I can see that breaking, you know, people away from Sony. That's, I don't know. I just hope they get it. You, this is yeah, a big deal to you, because I mean, I know. Yeah. Yeah, because I like I like I said, I get on there and I watch people play. And that's. Would, I mean, would you like to share, like, you know, start your own little gameplay channel? If all you had to do was hit a button or upload it off in, in from PlayStation. I'm not the greatest, but yeah. <laughs> I, th I, well, yeah I, I think yeah, a lot I mean. of I think a lot of people would try too, though. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It opens up the doors for a lot of people, and a lot of people that might not be able to, if you know, afford or have the money to go buy like the the Hog Pogs or the Elgatos or Hog Hodgepodge, however you say it, but Elgatos and the capture cards. It it opens some doors up, and I mean YouTube is God, it's probably watched more or right on par with cable. Yeah. So, yeah, YouTube. YouTube's a big deal, so. Yeah, it is. All right, so I guess we're going to get into our next segment, which is basically our, what is it, our top five games for this week? Yeah, oh. well, top four and then one that we have more info on. One that we have more info on? Yeah, number two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we already talked about number two. I'm watching them right now. Yeah, I know. I know. Uh, so, let's see. What's number one? we have to get number one. What's number one? Mad Max. Mad Max. Yeah, Mad Max. Anybody that's seen the movie. He was a bad mofo. Yeah, Mel Gibson was good in it. That was before he beat Juice. I mean, not <sighs> beat Juice, hated Juice. I mean, <laughs> dang. <laughs> That was when he was just a bad mofo. Yeah. That loved everyone. Yeah. Yeah, but Mad Max is supposed to be based off the actual movie. Now, they're saying that Mel Gibson is not doing the voice. Damn. I, yeah, I, that was the first thing that came out of my mouth. I was like, well, shit. I was, I was hoping to. I couldn't wait for when he got out and said, come here, you Jew. <laughs> But, yeah, he's not doing the voice. Uh, what was, uh, we seen some rumors that they, he's supposed to look like the... Uh, <sighs> there are so many rumors around this whole Mad Max thing. It looks to be a good game, but I'm not yeah, sure if they're going to make the likeliness after Mel Gibson or somebody else. But you still can't take it. For, I mean, Mel Gibson played... What were there were like three, right? Yeah, Beyond Thunderdome, and um, there were like three movies dealing with uh, I, Mad I Max. So. so I mean, I think so. and they were huge, quite popular. The yeah, movies. They, I, I, me personally, I liked uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Yeah, I think I mean, everybody does. I mean, even Dr. Dre and back when Tupac were alive, they had a, a rap video that was based on the Thunderdome, one of them old school ones. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I just thought I'd throw yeah. that out there. It was a it was a huge hit. Yeah. But I mean, the, the gameplay looked good and everything. It's just don't really have a lot of I don't <coughs> have a lot of info on it other than you know Mel Mel Gibson is not doing the voice, which I'm pretty bummed about. But apparently, it's supposed to it's supposed to look like Mel Gibson, so. Hopefully they have somebody that can do the voice if they're gonna make him look like the guy. Well, if they well they might not even make it look like Mel Gibson. They can't. I don't know what they're gonna do. But even if they don't, I still think it's gonna be a good game because mm -hmm. I mean, it regardless, it's kind of based off the 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 whole Mad Max series. Yeah. I've from what I've seen, I haven't. I've seen a little bit of the the actual gameplay. I've seen a, a trailer. It was enough to actually interest me, but it kind of gives me that vibe of a Fallout type yeah. of game slash. Uh, I don't know if many people play this, but Rage, uh, the game that I want to say ID did. I think that was the last game before they were bought out or whatnot. But it looks a lot like Rage slash Fallout to me. Um, I'm not sure if it's an open world. I haven't gotten into that, but the whole desert and it 
it just feels like we still got all the crazy guys. Yeah, down there. Uh, I mean it just, and I, I I don't know. I like playing Fallout, so if it's anything within that realm, I think it'll be a pretty good game. I mean, graf yeah. graphically it looked all right. I can't say that it looked like the one of the more polished games with mm -hmm. like you know like Watch Dogs and some of these other games that you've been seeing. It looked good. It just may, it still got a ways before it comes out. So maybe there'll be some more polish in it and it'll look a little bit better. It didn't look bad. Don't mistake me for saying it looked bad. It looked good, but it just didn't look as well polished as it could be. Yeah. So you get well, it don't come out until what, two thousand fourteen? So they still got some time. Yeah, I believe it's in two thousand fourteen. Uh I'm not sure. Actually I think I might have it wrote down on the actual date. Now, the, I'm sure these dates aren't set in stone, but according to this, it's 5-31-2014. So that's a oh. little ways away. That's uh, basically in the summer. So it's like destiny. Yeah, pretty much, bud. Pretty much. I think I wrote that down for you just so you could cry on tonight. Uh, it's saying 6-30-2014. What the fuck? <laughs> so Mad Max will be out before Destiny. But that's all right. You'll get to play Mad Max before Destiny. It, yeah. See, I wrote I wrote down the dates of some of the key games, at according to GameStop when they're coming out. So, there you go. Destiny comes out. It needs to come out sooner. I know that's what you. That was our very first show, guy. It's okay. It it's okay. It 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 will be coming. <laughs> so, basically, people's emotions. Well, they like doing that. Yeah. So. After playing with the emotions, so here we dee 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 dee. You drank the monster again. That that triggers the smoke break. Yeah. Look, we're like the video game Saints Row and GTA. Okay, we're not very polite and we don't follow proper etiquette. No, no probably not. That's the way life goes. Before you know it, I'll be burping on the microphone. Yeah. Sorry, it's human nature. Number two on our list is a game we've talked about. I guess we're going to dive into it a little bit more. Watch Dogs. I said I wasn't a real big fan of it. Uh, I kind of I kind of like the new the new little stuff they they have in it though. Well, the the a little more detailed than what I thought it was. You know. Well, Watch Dogs is going to be it's going to be all right, but I don't know if I'm really antsy to play it. To be honest with you. It doesn't sound bad, but I mean, there's a lot of really weird stuff going on there. They're saying like you yeah. can walk, when you're playing the game, you can walk by somebody, all right? And you can find out their sexual fetishes and their criminal history. That's kind of funny. It is, but I mean, I I can't wait. Like, I just want to play it to walk by and see somebody sexual fetishes furries. I mean, I just... <laughs> I watched the video on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I watched. Uh, it was, of course, it was YouTube. I've seen this, but it was uh, furry fetishes or something that some of the games where you can have furry furries. Animals. Yeah. Some weird stuff, ain't it? Oh yeah, it, it is. It's, I, I mean, the way they put it on the video and stuff, it was funny as hell though. But it, it was funny as hell. So. I don't, I don't know about that, but I like I like the part where they were talking, where even though you can do all this, does not make you pretty much invincible. Yes, I, I because guess because people can do it back to you. Yes, where you can be hacked by another player entering your, entering your world unannounced. Yeah. So if. if I don't know if if you're one of those people that like multi the whole multiplayer aspect to the games that are coming out. Basically, someone can. I, basically, what that's saying is, uh, if me and Crash both have Watch Dogs, and I'm playing, and he just wants to come mess with me. <laughs> he can pretty much come into my world. It won't let me know he's come into my world. It won't say, "Hey, you know, Crash is now in your world." And he just, from what I've gathered from it, you have to get semi-close to me to start hacking me. And then I'll get a pop-up or like a warning telling me that I'm being hacked. It yep. gives me a time limit. 
I have to find you within this area. I have to hunt you down. I have to basically stop you from hacking me. And I, from what I understand, it, if you kill the person that's in your world, you'll get a bonus. It's yeah, like, I, I believe it was. It was a bonus. Yeah, you get like a bonus. Uh, <clears throat> me, I've never really, like, the the way the new gens are working and the way the game plays or the multiplayer is just kind of seamlessly blending in. It's kind of weird for me because I'm, you know, I'm kind of used to it. I guess, you know, you gotta adapt and get used to the new age. I'm kind of used to like clicking on multiplayer and going to multiplayer and know that I'm playing multiplayer. Now, it did say that you could cut this off in the multiplayer, basically the multiplayer feature. If you're one of those people that just likes to get in, play your story, you don't want anybody interfering with you. You know, you're because there's a lot of people like that. You just want to get in, you want to play it, you want to do it at your own pace. You can cut that aspect off where people can't, you know, hop into your world and throw you off track. So I guess in a way that's kind of a, a cool feature because yeah. you can cut it off, you can cut it on. So if you want to play around with it and see what it is and how it works, you can do that. If you decide you don't like it, you can just cut it off and, and play basically the campaign. So Me, I'm going to probably have it open. Yeah, because you like that stuff. Yeah, I dare somebody to hack me. I'm gonna buy it just to do it, okay. And while I'm there, you'll we'll you'll it. look. It'll be easy to find me because I'll be doing this, watching dogs. That's right, watching dogs. <laughs> you get sidetracked off the game and just stare at your dogs. That's right. You'd find me. I wouldn't be a very good <laughs> hacker. <laughs> so, but, but I mean that that seemed pretty cool that you can keep you keep it going. You know that. I mean, it makes it more suspenseful, I guess you would say. I do have to say with these games that are coming out, a lot of them do seem like that. Like, replayability for me has never really been... There's a lot of games out there that say they have replayability, but you don't really feel like... I don't know, some of these games I don't feel like I want to replay it. It seems like these yeah. newer-gen games, there's going to be a lot of replayability or a lot of stuff that they're going to continually add... Or a lot of stuff that they're already adding to try and keep that game, you know, where it's not, you know, out with four weeks later I beat it, I'm done with it. It seems like they're trying to go in the direction to keep these games relevant, which is a well, good what, thing. Weren't we talking about that where we kind of missed the old games where it took about three, four discs to play? Yeah, it seems like today's standards are you get a game, now this isn't like a GTA or anything like that, but... Uh, you get some of these games and you can beat them within eight hours. I mean, it, and some even shorter. Yeah, some shorter than that. Like, I never really understood the whole purpose and point behind a Call of Duty campaign. I think you can sit down and beat those in like four hours. Yeah, four or five hours. Four or five hours, maybe in some cases less than that. You know, if you're like pro handbone gamer. Yeah. So uh, I, I remember like the old days, like the. In Metal Gear, the old original one, I think it was like two or three discs long. You know, you had to put it in and keep playing. Yeah. And now with that the Final Fantasy Seven was four. Well, I think you know, I think they could have had longer games this generation. But with Microsoft at that at this present point, they didn't have Blu-ray. I mean, so they were mm -hmm. having to package two discs or or whatnot for a game. Now with them both having Blu-ray, both are going to have some form of a cloud system. I do see that basically the games themselves are probably going to become a lot longer. I just think, you know, developers are kind of limited because you can't, yeah. unless you're doing it exclusive for a PlayStation where you can put it on a Blu-ray disc, you can pack a lot of information on it. You can't really pack tons of information on, you know, like the HD disc or, or whatnot. So I think that's going to evolve and change a lot because I've heard some of these games, they're talking like 100 plus hours in gameplay. I mean, that's crazy. Love it. I love it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like they're kind of getting back to, like, the old old school. Like, back in the day when they didn't care if they put it on three disc or four disc or two disc. You know, like your so. Final Fantasies and stuff. They were like, well, what's Final Fantasy Seven? Was that another, like, three disc? Three or two disc back in the day, I want to no. say. Uh, which one? The Final Fantasy Seven back on, like, that PS1. Was four. Was it four disc? It was four discs. Well, see, that that sounds like what we're getting back to. Those really long games. Now, like in this current gens, you could do a lot of stuff in like Skyrim, GTA. Of course, the new GTA come out. 
there's a lot of stuff to do in that. There's a lot of stuff to keep you occupied. But when you get down to like the bare bones games, like a Halo or you know, like a Mass Effect. Well, Mass Effect kind of had that exploration. You could kind of go do stuff. But Halo and them is like very, it's one dimensional. You know, they yeah. they have a campaign. Once you beat the campaign, then you got multiplayer. Call of Duty, same yep. thing. Once you play the campaign, beat the campaign, there's really only multiplayer. That you can't really go and do anything else, and they don't really pack a lot of hours into it. So, That's yeah. like I've been playing, what, Far Cry 3? Yeah. And well, that game, I mean, the, you have all these side missions and stuff to do. Them open world, like, sandboxes, like the Skyrims, I guess is what you could call them, open world sandbox type gameplays. GTA, where you can kind of, like, just drive anywhere, you know, if you want to go jump four-wheelers and dirt bikes off heels all day, you can do that. Yeah. That, those type of games, anything with kind of that open world feel to it, there's a lot of doing there, usually is a lot of side missions, and that's what makes them kind of great, because you do get, I feel like for 60 bucks, when they come out, you know, if you buy the regular standard, you get a lot for your money, as far yeah. as gameplay. But, like, a lot of these games don't really, like, even, like, Dragon Age 2, because, like we said, I was a big Dragon Age fan. Dragon Age 2 was kind of like a one-dimensional this way, this way, and that's it. So, but we could stand here and beat this horse to death, Chris. We need to move on. What's number three on our list? Number three is uh, Thief. Ooh. Thief. Ooh. I think you know a little bit more than that one. Not really. Absolutely no. nothing. I've never stolen anything in my life. Well, I, didn't, I wasn't talking about that. Oh, you're talking about the game, game Thief. Was it? Yeah, the game. Oh, I got you, buddy. <laughs> Thief. I, re I want to say I actually remember playing it. I was a kid. That's been a while. I don't know how many years it's been since the Thief's come out, but it, it's been a while. I want to say this is being headed up by, I'm not sure, the developer, but I want to say it might be Ubisoft because I want to say the team's out of Montreal. Um... It's basically a respin of the old series Thief from back in the day. And basically, it is what it says. You're a thief. But you have like a bow and arrow. And from what I've seen in gameplay, you stay in the shadows. The shadow is your friend. And you have a bow and arrow. And, you know, you have like wet, like wet arrows that are put out, you know, like uh, torches. So an area that's lit up, you can basically turn it dark. You can pickpocket guards, or you can just stay in the shadows and try and get around them. That's basically what the whole point of it is. You have your, basically, hook arrows are kind of returning, which is basically you shoot, and it's like a hook, and it, you, you know, basically it pulls you up, and there's little things that you can do. I don't know tons of information on it, but from what I've seen, like, Thief itself actually looks really good. I think it's gonna be a pretty fun game. It's a spin-off of a classic. It's been mm -hmm. kind of redefined, and the way that it controls, like the way you can move into the shadows, you can pretty much like zip in there real quick. It just seems like it's... I don't know. I'm interested in playing it because it's kind of like one of those old childhood games I played when I was real young. Now they're bringing it back. It looked good in the demonstration they did. And, uh, I don't know. It's kind of, for anybody who doesn't know or ha hasn't heard of it, most people have probably heard of a lot of these games. It's kind of like a splinter cell. You know, you got to be real quiet and stealthy. I mean, you can take out certain enemies, but, you know, when you take one out, you have to, like, drag them into the bushes. You can't leave them just laying out in the open for another guard to find or whatnot. So you have to be very stealthy, stealthy in, in what you're doing. So it's kind of one of those games where you kind of have to sneak around. You know, you got to pick your targets and make sure that, you know, you pick them wisely. So I'm kind of excited about it. I don't know. Have you seen yeah. much of it? Have you seen the trailer? I've seen the trailer, but I haven't seen any gameplay or anything. I've seen a little bit of the gameplay. It looks pretty solid. It seems like they're really putting a lot of time into it. Basically, the, the lead head that was there was talking about it on the design and stuff basically they're really wanting to make sure that when it comes out it's really polished that they've got it you know all the controls really tight that it it perfunction and it forms really well 
So, I mean, it seems like they're really putting a lot of time into it. Plus, that because it is an older franchise they're bringing back, they want to yeah. make sure they do it right. So, I'm kind of excited to play it. It does look good. It looks like it's going to be a solid game. And because it's a little bit different, kind of that medieval vibe slash stealthy type of deal. Who I mean, yeah. I love bow and arrows. So, I mean, God. <laughs> and hiding in the shadows. It doesn't get any better than that for me. Oh, no. <laughs> so that's our number three game, uh, another game that we've added to our watch uh, our watch list to look out. I want to say I got the time on that. They're saying that that one actually, according to GameStop, is supposed to come out 225 2014 So basically right after the new year, that game is supposed to yeah. come out according to GameStop. Now, of course, all these dates, I, I'm pretty sure none of them are set in concrete. Probably not. So, But as of now, last time I checked on GameStop, that was a release date on that. Now that I'm looking down at it on my little sticky note. I got the dates on a little sticky note. Uh, you got to love your sticky notes. I love my sticky notes. <laughs> they should make a game called Sticky Note. Mess around, they might. They probably will. <laughs> They're running out of ideas. <laughs> number, what's, so what, what? Number four? Yeah, what's number four? Project Spark. I, I watching watching the Project Spark. Uh, it's a what's it? What's the word for it? Like a free flowing. You build your own kingdom. Uh, you pretty much build your own world. Yeah, I was actually kind of jealous when I heard this was coming to Microsoft and not going to be on PlayStation. Cause it yeah, it looks fun, man. It, yeah, especially if you're the type of person that loves to build your own worlds. Yeah. And I'm getting all them. And then you, once you build it, what, you can put enemies in and stuff to where you can actually battle in your world? I've heard that you can basically recreate, like, almost anything in it. Like, this is what I've heard about Spark. All right, I, I'll break down what I know on it. Um, basically, Spark is going to be a free-to-play. You can play it on, like, a Windows, I think a Windows 8, like, PC slash Xbox One. You create your world, and they give you kind of like what uh, Little Big Planet did in some sense. They give you like your your uh, your tools that you need yeah. and your basic commands. Now, from what I was reading the other day, what they're gonna do is like they're not trying to limit anybody, but you'll have a basic set of stuff that you need to get started to start up and build your world, enjoy it, and play in it. And basically, they give you like these brush sets where like they were, they were also playing on a tablet. So that's another thing. Uh, yeah. In the demo, they were playing on a tablet. So like a tablet, you can use your touch screen, and you can, uh, you know, basically just drag and slide your finger or whatnot. They, they, your mouse and everything will pretty much do the same. Yeah. But you basically build your world. Now, from what I've seen, I guess where the, this game's gonna make some of its revenue is they're gonna sell like brush sets where you can go in and buy more stuff like more item brushes and all that stuff so basically they're going to sell you can buy packages that will give you more stuff that you can put in your world that you're not going to have you know for the at the free to play you know slot so you can buy these brush packs or these you know like texture packs I, I, I'm guessing the way I, I read it you're going to buy things that you can put in your world and make your world even more you know, expansive or recreate what you what you could say, like the, pretty much like a your own unique world. Yeah, it's kind of like in a sense, it's kind of like a Minecraft slash Little Big Planet, and and you can only compare stuff. I mean, again, it's it it is something kind of different and new, but if you really break it down, it's kind of like a Little Big Planet because you're creating your world, and you can create what goes on in it. Um, I think you can create and share with your friends, and your yeah. friends can do the same with you. Um, um, I think you and your friends can build in the same world together. I'm not sure on that. So no, uh, I didn't hear anything yet. Yeah, I'm not sure if they can do if they can create in the same world with you. I'm pretty sure they're probably going to be something like that. I but, hope so. But basically, like when you when they show the demo, they had like these goblins, and this guy gave. You have brains that you, like he gave a rock, basically a brain, 
which gave it an ability and you basically tell it what you wanted to do and the rock became a pet rock that was hopping up and down following them around yeah. then the goblins come down i think that's what they were and they were attacking and and basically i want to say it was his friend comes sliding in on a ridge and just all kinds of crazy stuff that you can do and they're saying that you can do a lot with it so i'm kind of interested to actually get hands on and play project spark it looked very interesting to me i've always liked that kind of open creativeness i think a lot of people did i think that's why little big planets done so well and i think that's why you know like minecraft has done so well because you have the ability to build into what you want yeah so and this isn't much different besides it did look really good it was very yeah. bright very crisp the coloration was really good in it and it just seems like it it'll be fun to play <laughs> so well, i'm gonna have to try it with you you gonna try it i mean it looks fun yeah. man it does it doesn't look too bad so yeah. you're gonna be Definitely. playing spark and i can make fun of you sitting there you playing so you'll probably just draw boobs on the ground call it boobland boobland maybe i'll i'll do baby call got it, back it, <laughs> I, guess, I was gonna say call it humpland humpland there you go. <laughs> All right. What's so, number five? What? Well, you tell me. What is number five? I don't know. You tell me. I guess there is no number five. <laughs> number five is uh, the witness. Oh yeah, that was our number five. Yeah. That was a great movie. <laughs> the game. Oh, the game. Yeah, the game, The Witness. He's a good it's rapper. Be, what was it? Uh, Jonathan Blows. It's pretty much like a Jonathan Blows braid. Whoa, whoa, easy now. Who's blowing who? No, 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 no. no. Man, you start to sound like GTA right now. <laughs> Very dirty. <laughs> no. <laughs> See, that's what happens. You play too much of that game. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have been. Oh, I can't say nothing. I've been playing crap out of Far Cry 3. Yes, games. Uh, the Witness. I don't really know what to say about The Witness. This is a, what, a big puzzle? It's, it's a puzzle game? I think it... I, I want to say it's kind of like an open world, but you have to solve puzzles. And I want to say there's ten yeah. puzzles on this island that you're on. The color... The, the artistic approach to it's very kind of like cartoony pastel... Well, not I wouldn't really say pastel. The colors mm. are very vibrant and bright. <laughs> but you have to solve puzzles. And they, they say they're relatively challenging. And if you solve seven of the ten puzzles, you can basically go to the end and beat the game. But I do know that he said for people that wind up beating all ten puzzles, you'll get a special surprise. Ooh, I love surprises. If it's a Cracker Jack surprise, I'm not very impressed. Because those things, I remember when you used to actually get surprises in them, now you just get a piece of paper. <laughs> if it gives me a piece of paper, yeah. I'm going to be angry. It's a little piece of paper that you sit there and you fold it and you put it on your finger. Yeah, you put it on your finger. Yeah, you like, your yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if it's a Cracker Jack prize, I'm disappointed. <laughs> but I don't know, that's what he said. It's to try and encourage people to basically do all ten puzzles. I'm interested in playing this game. I actually kind of like puzzle games, and then I also yeah. don't like puzzle games. When he says they're relatively challenging, if that means that they're relatively challenging, you know, but even people who suck at puzzles can still beat it, then I'm game. If it's relatively yeah. challenging for people who are great at puzzles, then I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be the guy like, Arr! that's going to be me. <laughs> You're gonna end up. You're gonna end up having to buy another controller. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Cause I Maybe a new TV. I suck at puzzles. Good lord, do I suck at puzzles. <laughs> but I'm interested in trying it because you know the big deal about everything right now, and and this is for now. They keep they keep stressing indie developers, indie developers, independent. You know, I don't think that you're gonna hear this much longer because I think indie, to, you know, independent games are just as popular nowadays is like mainstream triple-a games the only difference is that these guys can do it with a smaller budget and still make a really good game i think that independent word kind of is going to get thrown out down the road 
It used yeah. to be a time they weren't taken serious. And there's been so many, like, Hotline Miami's. And, I mean, there's been so many good games. And and people have kind of opened up. And just now people play so, such a big horizon of games that, like I said, it's a lot of people don't care as long as it's a fun game. So yeah. the, the, win, the witness, I guess all I can really say, and, I mean, to break it really down, it's a puzzle game, kind of cartoonish art style very vivid and very good you know very bright colors in it oh yeah uh i think i'm i'm willing to give it a go it it, it actually is it, it's i want to say i brought it up to you yeah you did yeah so i mean it's been hyped up a lot that's not the reason why i'm even into it i think because it's just kind of a bizarre game for me it's not one of those games that i usually play but it's I don't know, there's just something there that makes me want to give it a try and, and play it. And it's not even the fact that it's an independent game, you know, an indie developer, basically. It's... Yes, he's already had one game, and it was a, a decent hit, but that just, I think that gives you more credibility that maybe this one's going to be even better, which I haven't played his first one. I don't usually play a lot of the indie games, but I think I'm going to give the witness a try. What do you think? Yeah. Well, I sat there and seen Braid. And when he came out with the braid, that that game was that stuff blew my mind. What you could do in there, it's like <clears throat> that game itself. You're a little character running through these puzzles, but when you die, you have the ability to reverse time and go into time warps and stuff like this. So I was like, well, what what is this? You know, but me I like to I like to give my my brain a challenge so I'm gonna definitely have to try it out and see how challenging it is hey guy me and you give our brains challenges every day when we cut the computer on that's hard enough um, maybe it's time to challenge a little bit more yeah so the computer cutting holes is a little bit easier for us yeah that, that, it's starting to get too easy now I know I know how to do that I'm with you there so <laughs> the witness I guess that's going, I'm playing it, I, you're going to give it a yeah. try, and I yeah. guess we can give our review after we get to play it and see what it's all about. Yeah. So that's our, basically our top five for this week. Little, look, we rambled on a little bit in it, but I mean, there's only two guys here tonight, you know, mm -hmm. two men. We don't know, <laughs> we don't know where the other one, Pansy's at. But tell, hey, I, tell, tell us about a funny website oh you want to hear about that funny website yeah I want to hear about the funny website it's called www.funnywebsite.com oh yeah yep <laughs> I thought I thought it had the uh, word bone in it oh no no I can't tell everybody my dirty sites now <laughs> for my clothes I that's pretty much bringing our show to a wrap so to bring it in what crash is hitting at is my closing argument or my closing thought I guess you could say I really it's gonna be really short and it's it made me it's pretty funny it made me piss all over myself when I seen it laughing yeah, it was funny as hell Microsoft had to buy xbone.com they bought it Major Nelson said that it was basically this put in a nutshell was harmful to the people that worked hard on developing the Xbox one disrespectful it's bad that enough people have called your product x bone that you had to buy the dang thing before somebody else bought it and people started coming to xbone.com to bash on it i mean that's pretty i don't know so there you go that's my closing thought i mean it's sad that you had to buy it i understand look i understand that people worked hard on it all right i commend them for it but if something turns out that people don't like it, they just don't like it. You can buy it. Somebody's just going to come out with xbone1.com. <laughs> I just gave the next person. Something. I just gave somebody the idea. They're going to be like, xbone1.com. I'm on it. <laughs> people, uh -huh. you know, people have a right to write what they want to write. You can either take yeah. the criticism or not take the criticism. 
you know, like some people I know they have a really hard time taking the criticism. So, yeah. You can just deal with it. I mean, that's just the way it is. It, it wouldn't even matter if the Xbox One could, you know, transform into an airplane and fly you around the world. People are still going to find something they hate about it. That's anything. Oh. So, but that's my closing thought. I thought that was hilarious. So, oh, yeah, that was funny. Bringing it to you. Which you have, you have a new segment in the show for your closing out now, don't you? Yeah. Apparently, I don't talk enough on here. Yeah, we, we've done pretty good tonight. <laughs> and now you have this whole new segment that you've had to... I've had to just bestow upon you. And say, yeah, you just kind of threw it in my lap. I was like, here. You get to do it now. <laughs> You're the new guy to do this. Well, I'm I'm pretty much taking over the, the tech. Yes, you are. Yep, and uh, what what we found was uh, off a of Kickstarter. We uh, it's a new audio recording wristband called Capture. Uh, apparently, well, as of right now on Kickstarter, they have 761 backers on it. Um, their goal is to make 150 thousand. It'll be somewhere. Dollars. I'll, I'll post it and edit it somewhere, like, in the video somewhere. It'll be yeah. there. Yeah, apparently they have, as of right now, 12 days to meet their goal. They're, they're setting at $776,417. Whoa, you said dollars. That triggers the last... <laughs> Sorry, bud. Um, <laughs> but uh, apparently this... Uh, this new technology is it's a wristband recording um it like some James Bond crap yeah it's like some man is you the battery life on it is 24 hours which it is rechargeable yeah um with a we found micro we found out. micro USB I believe is what it said yeah micro yeah. USB charging um Pretty much, this thing, this wristband, uh, sit there and re it just listens to everything. Now, what happens is, if you're sitting in a conversation and somebody says something that you thought was funny or something, all you have to do is look, you know, look at your little watch and tap it. Now, when you tap it, it records that last 60 seconds. That you're, that, you know, that you're trying to hold on to. And what it, what they've done is, there's going to be an app that go, that works with all smartphones, apparently. All smartphone devices. And once you tap it, it instantly saves to your smartphone. Now, within that, you can... You can detail it, clip it out, you know, everything that you want to do to it. And then you can share it to your friends or something like that. So if somebody said something funny and you, you thought it was funny too, you tap your thing, it goes to your phone, you edit it, and you can share it. Or you can just send it out the way you recorded it. But it does 60 seconds. Yep. So, you know what's funny about that? Everybody's always, uh, everyone always is hollering about, it's always watching, it's always recording me on the Xbox. Yeah. And then now you got you can buy a watch that <laughs> records you for 24 hours. Yes, you can only save 60 seconds, but uh, I'll, be, I'll put the link to that in the description so people can go yeah. check it out. Anybody stumble, stumbles upon, you know, this video and wants to check it out, it really... The watches didn't, they, they actually don't look that bad. I mean, considering that what it does. They look like some Dick Tracy type watches. What's wrong with that, man? I didn't say nothing was wrong with it. I was. They look good. That's watch Dick Tracy. I know they have certain levels you can bid. I want to say, what was it, 75? If you placed the bid at 75, it got you a black or a white one. If you were yeah. a backer at 75, you got one in either white or black, your choice. And then, of course, they go up from there. You can get them in, in pretty much, you know, the higher up you're willing to back these guys and and their dream to make this. Well, but there was, like, multiple colors. Wasn't it? You could get, like, reds and yeah. blues and 
blacks yeah, and they, gold. They, they got black, white, sea foam, hot orange, hard yellow. Um, they actually have the uh, the little face plates can be changed to chrome or gold. Oh yeah, Risp get you a gold Risp grill. And, yeah, man. <laughs> but I mean, it's kind of neat that you can you can just tap it and share it. Yes, this is true. <laughs> so that's our tech, brought to you in part by the evil crash. So. That's going to do it for our Lethal Injections podcast.